open to the plan the Holy Spirit has for your life? We gain insight into His plan by reading Ephesians 2.10. It tells us that God has predestinated good works for us to do and that He has prearranged a good life for us to live. His plan is always best and His plan is always blessed. I invite you to join me for today's message entitled, Welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey Him. He'll put that desire in you and the power to do what pleases Him. So this evening, are you welcoming the Holy Spirit? Are you just 100%, if I could just see over your life, is there this sign that just says, welcome Holy Spirit? Welcome in my life. Now, here are, here are some of the barriers for people welcoming the Holy Spirit. There's a fear. There's this fear that, well, if I really welcome the Holy Spirit, if I live this Spirit-filled Christian life. Now, Pastor, I know some Spirit-filled people, quote, Spirit-filled people, and they're, they're kind of off a little bit. Or I know these people, and, and they're welcoming the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit led them to do some things that I think, quite frankly, are really off. Now, let me say this. Don't confuse how people have interpreted what the Spirit of God wanted them to do with what the Holy Spirit actually wanted them to do. You can misunderstand things. People think they heard one thing, but it was something else. They think the Lord wanted them to do one thing, and they misunderstand, they confused what he really wanted them to do. Don't be afraid. Don't resist the Holy Spirit. But just say, Lord, you know, I'm just welcoming, I just welcome you right now. I just want you to have your way in my life. This morning, you know, I got up real early through the night, actually. I was praying last night, and there was something I had planned today that I thought I was going to do. I just wanted to get God's clearance and kind of have the green light on that. And as I was praying throughout the night last night, I heard the Lord say, I have a different plan. And so when I woke up this morning, it was like I was excited. God, I just want to do what that different plan is. I don't know what that is, what it looks like, but if you've got a different plan, I'm all in. I just want to be on mission with you. And then as the morning unfolded, the Lord just began to help me to see, here's another plan. So I had these two options. One of them was I, what if you had asked me 24 hours ago what I was going to do today on a certain block of time, this is what I had planned. But you know, the Lord said, I have a different plan. And when I followed that plan today, it was so much better than what I had crafted in my own mind. Don't be afraid to just trust the Holy Spirit. How many know the Holy Spirit is not goofy? Can I get a good amen? amen. Now you say, Pastor, I know some people that they're kind of off. Trust me, the Spirit of God is the Spirit of wisdom, Paul said, and the Spirit of revelation. So you can trust him, you can relax, and you can trust the Spirit of God to lead you and to guide you. Now, will he call you to do things that are unorthodox? Yeah. Will the Spirit of God lead you at times to do things that you think, wow, where did that come from? Yeah, that's just the way he works. But there's a trust factor, and as you trust the Lord, you can be sure that things are gonna work out. Ephesians chapter two and verse number 10. Now this is from the Amplified and it, it goes on for a little while, but it's a great verse. It says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we would do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. So the Bible tells us that God has paths and plans that he has prepared ahead of time. The goal of the Christian is not to ask God to create a plan for their life, but it's just, Lord, reveal to me what that plan is. Prayer does not create a plan. Prayer only helps you to locate the plan. It helps you to understand what the plan is. The plan was there all along. And the Bible says that we have these, these predestined, planned beforehand, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them. I love this last phrase. 
living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. We're gonna live a good life, a good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. God has a good life for you. He does. You say, oh, pastor, I've, I've had a lot of problems. I'll tell you, I've had problems too, but I'm gonna tell you some of my problems have been self-inflicted. How many can give me an amen on that? I can't pin that one on God. Have you ever had like a horrible day and you think, oh, it was just a terrible day. And then you think, Lord, why did that happen? And the Lord's like going, I was trying to warn you all along. Now, I think when we follow the Lord, yes, we're gonna have tests. Yes, we're gonna have trials. Yes, we're gonna have challenges that we go through. That's, that's not what I'm referring to. Those are tests that the Bible says in James 1, 2, and 3 says they have a beneficial outcome. But there's a lot of things that we go through that we just got off the wrong path. And, and so God's plan is this, living a good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. The Holy Spirit is trying to get you on the good path. The Holy Spirit is trying to get you into a good plan. The Holy Spirit is trying to get all of us to understand and to walk in what we were created for. God has a plan and he wants us to help locate that plan. He wants to help us to locate that plan and then ultimately to walk in that plan. So many people in the body of Christ views the Holy Spirit as the missing person of the Godhead. So we would say it this way, the Holy Spirit is the most important person on earth. By that, I mean the member of the Godhead. He's the mo we need to be sensitive to him. We need to have our, our antenna up. We need to be sensitive to what the Lord is saying. Last night, we were driving down the road, and sometimes, you know, when you have kids in the car, you get random questions, like, I don't know where that one came from. But last night, our nine-year-old, we were driving down the road, and he's usually pretty quiet. He's the quietest of the three, and then he just randomly goes, Dad, where is the antenna on this car? I'm thinking, well, I think it's built into the window. Uh, you know, and I, I, he goes, where is the antenna on this car? Well, do you know, spiritually speaking, I'm not talking about you carrying around some rabbit ears in your life, but I'm saying you have a spiritual antenna. You need to be alert. Spirit of God, what are you saying here? Let me be sensitive to you. And it, it may not even be obvious. It's not obvious to other people, but you need to go into every situation. If you're seeking direction in your life, put up your antenna spiritually. Lord, what are you saying about this? Sharon and I have made decisions before, and I've listened to everybody else's opinion, but I know the Holy Spirit's got an opinion. Let's listen to his. And so get, get to the point where he's your counselor. He's the one you're looking to for direction. Why? Because he's trying to lead you in a good path, a good plan that he has for, for your life. So here's what happens. When the Spirit of God comes into Tom Arnold's life and begins to work, you know what's gonna happen? Change. God loves me just like I am, but guess what? He loves me too much to let me stay that way. And the Lord knows that if I'm gonna get from point A to point B, if I'm gonna follow him and the plan that he has for my life, there's gonna have to be changes made. And when the Holy Spirit brings change into our life, it's change for the better, but yet it's change that will get us into an abundant life. It'll be a blessing. The Holy Spirit comes into your life. He starts talking to you about finances. You say, Pastor, I don't want the Holy Spirit to talk to me about my finances. Well, he wants to talk to you about your finances. The Holy Spirit comes in and begins to work in your life. He'll start talking to you about your marriage. He'll start talking to you about your children. He'll start talking to you about your job. He'll start talking to you about every, literally every, there's no area of your life that's off limits. And the Spirit of God knows how to make your marriage work. The Spirit of God knows how to make your finances work. You say, Pastor, I need more finances. Actually, sometimes we need more wisdom first. I'm not saying you don't need more finances, but really, where you're at right now, before the more finances show up, you need more wisdom to show up. And so we're praying, we're asking amiss, we're praying in one direction, but maybe the Lord's showing us something else. The Lord isn't the one that needs to change. <laughs> Can I get an amen on that, all right? So it's not like my prayer, I, I'm gonna go on a fast. I'm gonna seek God. Why are you seeking the Lord, pastor? Well, you know, fasting doesn't change God. I'm not fasting to change God. I'm fasting to change Tom. 
I'm fasting to help me get more in harmony with the will of God. So I can go on a fast for healing, but God wanted to heal me before I ever started the fast. His will was healing in the beginning of the fast, the middle of the fast, and the end of the fast. But what what fasting can do is just help us to get more in tune, more sensitive, more tapped into what is a rhema word, what is the Spirit of God saying to me about this particular situation. That's why you need to fast, is to help fine-tune your sensitivity to God. When Jesus was on the earth, you remember he spoke a lot of parables. Some of them were lengthy parables, and some were just one-liners. And this is one, Mark chapter two and verse number 21. He says, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is destroyed and so are the skins. But new wineskin is for fresh wineskins. So Jesus said, nobody's gonna take new wine and pour it into the old wineskins. If he does, the wine's going to burst the skins and the wine will be destroyed. So what is the symbolism here? What is the Spirit of God wanting to talk to us about? Well, this new wine's a type of the Holy Spirit, right? The symbolism, it's the picture of the Spirit of God. And these wine skins are a type of, hear this, it's a type of the human nature. All these skins represent the different all of mankind, all the races of mankind. And the Spirit of God is poured into our lives. But what can happen? We've got to be flexible. We've got to be adaptable. In biblical times, wine was stored in animal skins rather than in bottles. As the bottles aged or these skins aged, they became stiff, they became brittle, they become, we'd say, inelastic. They wouldn't change. They were rigid. And so... As we walk with the Lord, we can become this old wineskin that's just very rigid, inflexible, not willing to make any change. But do you understand? I don't care if you're 89, 90, 110, 350. I don't care how old you are. How many know you got to be willing to make changes? And you've got to be adaptable to the plan of God. And so when the fermentation process took place, if these wineskins weren't flexible and adaptable, what would happen is is that these, this wine would break or that brittle skin would get broken. And so the Lord is telling us that unless we're soft and pliable, we can hinder the work of the Spirit of God in our lives. We've got to be flexible. We've got to be adaptable. We've got to be open to what the Spirit of God is doing. Being open to change just simply means you're willing to be elastic and flexible. Flexible people seldom get bent out of shape. What do you do? You're just going to flow with the Lord. Most of the miracles that Jesus performed, the real super miracles that Jesus performed, many of them, most of them, happened in the way of an interruption. Thanks so much for joining me for today's program. Remember, The member of the Godhead that you will have the most interaction with on a daily basis is the Holy Spirit. He is the member of the Godhead who is most active on the earth today. The Holy Spirit is by far the most important person on earth. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.